So this round, I'm going to get a little bit more practical and talk about a concrete aspect of my writing process. I've never been so interested in the idea of writer's block. For me, it's not a matter of being blocked. I mean, I can always whine on the page about how I can't write. So the key to it for me is how to give my writing a power that I'm looking for, how to make it less crappy in some form. So I'm always looking for a million different ways to see my writing in a, a fresh way, how to find that voice that I talked about in the last presentation. Now in this presentation, I'm not going to talk about getting feedback through traditional means like a writing group or some fellow writers or a mentor in some writing program. I'm going to focus on ways that you can see your own writing in a fresh light without any outsider giving you feedback. So now the first realm has to do with making the writing look different on the page or on the screen. So one obvious thing is to change the font or to change the color scheme. Sometimes I'll switch off between two different writing programs. When I feel stuck in one, I'll pop into the other. Another thing I like to do is print it out and look at it on a physical piece of paper. That, that tends to be useful for me. Sometimes I'll even, even though I don't do my writing in a word processor, I do it in more simple text editors or in Scrivener, I'll sometimes throw it into Pages or Microsoft Word and mess with the formatting. I'll give it, let's say, a two-column format with use a small font, single space, and print it out there so it kind of looks like a magazine column or a newspaper column. And sometimes that helps to help me see it slightly differently. So that's changing the way it looks. Now, uh, I, another level that's even more powerful is to hear how it sounds when you read it out loud. So I'll just read a few pages and see how that sounds. Or to give myself a little bit more of a self-consciousness, I'll read it to a mirror. That somehow lets me scrutinize it a little bit better. Or if you want to get more self-conscious, take off your shirt or take off your pants. Read it while standing on a desk. Also, a thing I like to do is read it out loud to a friend. This other person doesn't have to be a writer. Just somebody who's willing to tolerate you standing there and reading. Even if they don't give you a lick of feedback, you'll feel how, how your writing is coming off in front of another person. And I think that's really valuable. Another twist to this is to get someone else to read it. Have a friend read it to you. And then you'll really see things that you might not have seen otherwise because they don't know what your intention is. They just know what's on the page. And if you're like me and you don't always have friends then get the computer to read it. I, I love doing this. Uh, with, with Mac, it's built right in, so you can just uh, turn on the uh, text-to-speech. Most people recognize me by my voice. Hello, my name is Serena. I am a British English voice. Probably it was a metaphor for what a failure her husband was. Every damn book Ruth Reed seemed to somehow relate to Dave's failures, as if he didn't have enough dead men in his head criticizing him for his failures. He now had a goddamn wife doing it. With Windows, there's several different writing programs that you can get to to do this. But when the computer reads it in that boring computer voice, it doesn't give a shit about what you are trying to do. It's just going to read the words on the page. And those words really will have to stand on their own. Now, these techniques don't solve all writing problems. This is really just what I use to focus on a voice in particular. It can help with other things like whether transitions work and things like that. But it's just for me to get the energy and the kind of sound I want on the page. And probably you guys have a bunch of other zany methods. Uh, I'd like to hear about them. That's all. Good luck writing non-crappy stuff.